While Justice Alito is facing well-earned criticism for these trips, there's another person who's played a role akin to matchmaker between conservative justices and billionaires. And that person is Leonard Leo. He's a guy on the left, conservative activist, co-chairman of the Federalist Society. According to ProPublica's reporting, it was Leo who helped organize the fishing trip in 2008, invited Paul Singer and asked Singer if he, could, if he and Justice Alito could fly on his jet. Here's Leonard Leo on that luxury fishing trip. He's the guy in the center of the photo holding the fish in his left hand on the right side. And remember this photo photorealistic painting depicting Harlan Crow and his pal, Justice Clarence Thomas? The guy on the left, second to the left with the steepled fingers, is Leonard Leo. Mr. Leo refused to answer questions about the fishing trip, but he issued a statement lambasting ProPublica's reporting on the conservative justice's ethical lapses. It says in part, quote, we all should wonder whether this recent rash of ProPublica stories questioning the integrity of only conservative Supreme Court justices is bait for reeling in more dark money from woke billionaires who want to damage the Supreme Court and remake it into one that will disregard the law by rubber stamping their disordered and highly unpopular cultural preferences, end quote. And that particular peculiar statement prompted this response from Dahlia Lithwick, a senior editor for Slate who writes about the court, quote, the hilarity of hearing dark money from woke billionaires from the guy who was connecting unwoke billionaires to justices for travel and influence. It's amazing the level of projection, end quote. All right, what's left to do except to talk to Dahlia Lithwick about this? She's the senior editor for Slate uh, and the host, host of the Amicus podcast. Dahlia, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having this me back. This story gets stranger and stranger by the day. But what we didn't get to talk about last night when we went in depth with the ProPublica reporter was Leonard Leo. This guy is the Where's Waldo of conservative justices. He's always around. He's in the picture. He's there. So to the extent that this was not a random fishing trip that Alito and this billionaire went on, the guy in the middle, ostensibly the guy who's always in the middle, is Leonard Leo. Right. He's the travel agent yeah. who has no interest in reshaping the court, to be sure. He just likes traveling with justices and billionaires. Right. I mean, it's really amazing that quote you just read, the statement he gave to ProPublico talking about, you know, the woke, uh, dark money uh, uh, left here. And the idea that he doesn't have an interest in reshaping the court. Right. I mean, the reason the court is hearing those cases you talked about at the beginning, rehearing affirmative action, rehearing whether you can deny service to LGBTQ customers, that's because he reshaped the court. Right. That's the why those cases are back. And just to be clear, the, the Leonard Leo and the Federalist Society prepared lists of judges that Donald Trump could pick from, pre-vetted, to say that conservatives will approve of these people if you pick them. Leonard Leo is not a casual observer to the shaping of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. He is possibly the guy whose thumb has most been on the scale. Uh, not only that, but he brags about it. Yes. This is something that he has been lauded for, feted for, given, you know, awards and praise. Don McGahn, you know, this is a thing that, you know, he gives elaborate interviews to the Washington Post, to the New Yorker, saying, yep, I, I'm the guy. I yeah, did this. Right. And the idea that he is then in photos with people and he says, oh, we're not talking about right. the business of the court. It's super weird that I'm sitting here with Clarence Thomas and Harlan Crow and Mark Pauletta, but we're talking about sports. Right. I mean, it's just the fatuousness of the defense. Take the win. You reshape yeah. the court. You got these billionaires. You've got a big brother program where you match up a multi-billionaire with a Supreme Court justice and you have them lavish them with right. gifts and things. Take the win. Right. You did it. Right. Don't give interviews about it. So here's the interesting thing. Yesterday, about 6.30 p.m., in addition to the idea that ProPublica's reporting had already come out, uh, this uh, op-ed, or, or not the op-ed, but um, well, it was an op-ed by, by Justice Alito, had been printed in the Wall Street Journal. At 6.30 yesterday evening, they came out and attacked ProPublica, saying that they are trying to damage the court, right, by, by reporting on it. The language is very similar to Leonard, Leonard Leo's language here. The idea that by reporting on justices and their ethics, you are thereby damaging the court. Now, as journalists, that doesn't appear, that doesn't apply anywhere else. Everywhere else, it's holding people to account. But somehow with the Supreme Court, if you report on them in a negative way, you're damaging the institution. Right. This is classic shoot the messenger, right? right? This is all of those of us who actually really do love and care about the court and would like it to function with dignity, would like it to model 
sobriety and seriousness, the way we're not seeing modeled on the floor of right. the House, we're not actually trying to take down the court. What we're saying is abide by the rules. All Justice Alito needed to do was disclose. If he had yeah, disclosed, this is really, let's make this, he didn't have, he could take everything that was given to him. He just needed to disclose it. Yeah, I mean, it's, he can't, I mean, there's a whole fight going on about whether this plane was a facility for purposes of the, of the statute, because he's saying that the plane was a facility, which is clearly wrong. But the fact is, when they say, oh, you know, Justice Ginsburg traveled and Justice Breyer traveled, we know that because they disclosed their travel. Right. They disclosed it. So you can kind of go around the world and eat chicken at bad places, but don't tell us that it's none of our business. So the so there's two issues. If, as you have said, one of the issues with the court is that most people reporting on the court are there to report on the jurisprudence, the cases, the the, the background of, of why these cases come to be. They were most times when I'm interviewing you, it's about the cases. Now it's become a little bit about the court, and that's a different role for a lot of reporters. So the thing that people need to understand is that there are ethics and there are the rules that they have to follow. The rules are very few, but we don't have ethics, ethics rules for Supreme Court justices the way we do for other federal courts. Right. The Supreme Court justices are supposed to be policing themselves. Right. Uh, it is, there is no way to enforce this they say. And so they're each sort of a law unto themselves. And that's why you get Justice Alito kind of looking around for a dictionary where he can find somewhere, somewhere a definition of air travel as facilities, right? There is not the ability for them to enforce it against one another. And that raises the burden on them to be scrupulous and meticulous the way every other government official is right. about abiding by the law. And the other thing I would just say is that it's really essential that when they say that we're taking them down, what they're doing is making a monarchic argument right. about how they are above the law. Yeah, we're not allowed to That's do that. That's terrifying. Talia, thanks as always.